What's up everybody, Rob here. So, uh, real quick video today, nothing particularly, um, you know, expansive or noteworthy or anything like that, but just something I thought would be fun to want to try out. Um, I'm going to start out by telling um, a story from back um, when I was in college. So this was about like 10, 12, 13 years ago thereabouts. I was at work um, in a grocery store and um, there was a snowstorm. Not a huge snowstorm, but a snowstorm nonetheless. Uh, plows came out, the whole deal. And um, the plow, being the utter morons that they were, plowed in everybody's car. The lanes were clear on the parking lot, yes, but not the parking spots. They pushed all the snow into the parking spots, blocking off everybody. And um, after they plowed everything in, the weather changed, it warmed up a bit, and we had freezing rain. So it, so there was this like two and a half, three foot, you know, bank of snow in front of my car, which by the way was a Chevy Aveo, which was a tiny little four cylinder, nothing of a car. Um, it worked, it, you know, served its purpose, but you know, not really like all that much horsepower there. Um, and um, there was now this bank of snow packed in plowed in snow in front of the car, um, as well as a layer of ice over the top of it. And so um, you can imagine I did not have a tremendous amount of fun digging out with, um, with a one-handed ice scraper, uh, you know, trying to dig my way out of this thing. So I resolved that this would never happen again. Now, there was a friend of mine who um, brought to my attention a particular website known as Cheaper Than Dirt, which I'm sure a lot of you have heard of. If you haven't heard of it, well, go to cheaperthandirt.com. I haven't been on there in a couple years. I don't know if they're still good anymore, but whatever. Any case, um, they sell military surplus goods and equipment. And so I resolved to never let that happen to me again. So I purchased this. This is an, as far as I remember, this was again 13, 14 years ago, but this is an East German Army entrenching tool, AKA folding shovel. And I've been keeping my car ever since. And yes, I have used it on multiple occasions to dig myself out of, well, snow and ice and all that other fun stuff that you get up here in the Northern Hemisphere. So today, I'm going to be testing this as a weapon. Now, this is not a weapon. This thing is designed to, um, in fact, you know, dig trenches. It's an entrenching tool, which is military for, you know, shovel, which, because that's exactly what it is. It folds up. There's not really a review of it. This thing's, it's rusted out. It's not that good. It's, like, got rust everywhere. Uh, the handle's semi-splintering. I mean, it's, you know, fairly solid. Um, but, you know, it's not exactly the best condition here. So, but it folds up. Yeah, it folds for convenient storage. Folds up and then you can, you know, put it away. Soldiers would have it in their packs, you know, uh, you know, convenient out of the way. Not really uh, particularly uh, cumbersome. You can have it at a 90 degree angle for um, entrenching that way if you need to. And it also comes... It also comes with a handy pick on it for uh, digging out, you know, um, harder surfaces like um, stone or that sort of thing, you know, like um, very rocky surfaces. So you have a shovel, you got a, um, a spike on the end of it, and um, yeah, I'm actually going to be testing this as a weapon. Uh, now, I do know that during... Uh, no, 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 no. I need that, I need that, I need that. Yeah, that was, that was my cat Jonah. Um, I wanted to name him Hellbreck, but I was overruled. All right, so soldiers throughout history have used shovels in various capacities. Uh, the Romans, you know, they say that the gladius was the weapon that, um, that built their empire, but really it's the shovel and basically their construction capabilities that, you know, maintain the empire. And um, they could be used as a weapon, which is what we're going to be testing today. Um, throughout history, you know, improvised weapons would be used, you know, all the time. That would, you know, pretty commonplace thing to do. And, um, yeah, there's actually things like this, or maybe not this particular model. This is an East German army. It's actually, it's, uh, 1969 it was made. So I'm going to presume that that's when it was made and manufactured. Um, but yeah, during World War I, these things were actually pretty, um, let me try to unfold it. Hold on. Um, but yeah, during World War I, um, soldiers would oftentimes use something like this. You know, this is relatively short. Almost like a mace length sort of thing, and it would work in the very close confines of well, of a trench, and um, yeah, they were pretty good improvised weapons. You know, you, uh, you have a very long rifle barrel in these very confined spaces with a bayonet on the end. You're probably gonna get stuck into something. Uh, you know, it's not gonna be as efficient, 
but you can uh, maneuver one of these things around and whack somebody in the face with it. Uh, the edge here is not sharp. It is dull as a spoon. You know, it's not designed as a weapon. It's designed as a shovel. And um, yeah, okay. Just going to go test it out and see uh, what kind of damage it does. Uh, once again, my targets can be plastic water bottles because, you know, I'm too cheap to get ballistics gel or anything like that. Um, you can really help me out if you, you know, subscribe to my channel and it would actually, you know, if I get a large following, it might actually rationalize me. Um, I may be able to, you know, actually justify spending the money on ballistics gel and, you know, all those other, like bone analogs and all that stuff. But until then, we're going to have to make do with plastic. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Just going to be uh, going out back. Going, finding some plastic bottles and uh, whacking them with a gigantic shovel. Or whacking with a tiny shovel. All right, let's, have, let's get to it. All right, so first test today, it's just really simple. Um, standard milk, you know, a uh, half gallon milk container. Just gonna be doing it. Of course, stop moving. No, you're frightened. All right, um, just a simple, you know, just a cut. I don't know what else to call it. It's not really gonna cut because, you know, this thing is pretty dull, but We'll see what happens anyway. So just, you know, nice benchmark, you know, just to give us an idea of what uh, what to expect. All right, and uh, not very much. Um, as you can imagine, this thing doesn't have a tremendous amount of mass involved with it. So um, yeah, there is a, yeah, you can see the crease right here. So because there's no mass, as soon as I hit it, there was nothing, it didn't cut since it's dull, uh, but there is a fracture right there. So, um, yeah, it is hitting with a um, decent amount of force, I would imagine. Uh, it's just that this thing has, you know, no weight to it, so it just slides right off. All right, not bad. Okay, um, same test again, same cut, just a um, standard swing of, you know, just a standard swing. Uh, but with something a little heavier here, uh, hopefully this thing will have a little bit more mass so it won't just get, um, you know, pushed off the, uh, you know, just get pushed off the, uh, the platform here. All right. I'm winding up like this is an actual weapon with, like, with technique involved. Like I actually know what I'm doing either. Even less damage than before. Look at that. Yeah, pretty solid. Okay, yeah, so like I said, this thing is not a weapon. And yeah, not everything's gonna be super exciting here. All right, so we know this doesn't work too well against a flexible target like, um, you know, just bottles with jugs in it because that's really more for cutting. And this thing has a cutting capacity of, well, a spoon, really. I mean, this thing is, you know, has no edge whatsoever. So instead, I'm going to be doing something, um, how much crushing capacity does it have? And that would be testing using solid ice. This is a solid piece of ice right here. And um, you can see what it can, what it can do as far as cutting goes. So, uh, not cutting, um, impact, crushing. All right, here we go. Okay, now we're on to something. Yep, right through that. I think I hit a little high, so um, I took the top right off, scalped it. Um, pretty interesting right there. Um, yeah, I guess there's more resistance here, so this is really much more of a crushing weapon, I guess you can say, if one used as a weapon. I'm gonna try to see if I can finish this off. I'm gonna aim a little bit lower, hopefully get a little more damage. Yeah, uh, more than I thought it would. Um, yeah, you got this crease right here. This wasn't there, right right at the point of impact. Um, can, let me see if you can tell. Yeah, this uh, crease right here. Right at the point of impact. Now, this is a solid brick of ice, so um, it's going to be pretty tough to get through. But uh, the fact that it did that much, given that it's... Um, its limitations. I'm actually pretty impressed with that. Um, now something like this is uh, much thicker and heavier than um, human bone. So the fact that it just even though it just has this little crease in it, you can imagine again something like a uh, like a forearm bone um, or a clavicle. You know, if, uh, just a quick downward strike with that. Uh, what kind of damage that would do? It would be absolutely devastating. It could absolutely you know shatter that bone and uh, put that person out of action if it doesn't kill them outright. Um, 
let's try something else. All right, now in addition to the uh, shovel blade itself, it also has a pick attachment. So we're gonna try that out. See how much you can pierce now. So we did um, we did cutting damage, we did bludgeoning damage, now piercing damage. Yeah, um, yeah, pierced it um, here, came out the other side. Yeah, we got a, uh, open the side, we got two over here. We got a, uh, we got a, uh, cut here and a cut here I think this I don't know maybe there's a stress fracture or something like that I don't know what that was but uh yeah we got uh two different locations we got uh we got holes in it very nice so yeah uh, this thing actually would be much more effective as a uh, as a piercing weapon um, you know so if you're in combat with this thing I would recommend using this part then uh, use the pick and uh, yeah, it's designed for going through rocks and clearing out rocky outcropping um, clearing out like uh, rocky um, Rocky soil that sort of thing, you know, but yeah, uh, very effective as a weapon All right, okay, so um, next test. It's uh, another Piece of ice this time against the ice pick Well, it's not an ice pick, but it's gonna be an ice pick now. Let's see what this does. Cut it right here. Crushed it. Went right through it, no problem whatsoever. Yep, this thing, uh, very effective. It, it does its job very well. It's designed for cutting through rock or, you know, dealing with rocks. I don't see ice be any more of a more of a problem. All right, uh, let's, you know, let's try to finish this thing off. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. That's some good penetration right there. Yeah, that that definitely works. Wow. I'd say, yeah, about a good, roughly a good two inches there about, inch and a half. Yeah, that would de of solid ice. So yeah, imagine that into a person's body. That would be absolutely devastating, you can imagine. Um, yeah. Highly effective, highly effective. Uh, the shovel end, not so much. I mean, it has a little bit of a crushing capacity there, but mostly it's about uh, just the, uh, you know, th th this does some damage. The pick, though, that does. This is the real deal right here. Um, shaped kind of like a Vector Corbin, actually, now that I'm looking at it. I never really looked at this thing all that much. Uh, but it is shaped, you know, it does have a bit of the crow's beak uh, look to it. So, you know, I guess that does make sense. Okay, um, another one. Well, this is heavier plastic, so, uh, you know, just a... Uh, laundry detergent container. Uh, I can do it again with the um, flat end of the shovel head, of the shovel head, just to see what kind of damage it does here. Uh, you know, just cutting, but uh, something a little bit more substantial. Maybe that will, maybe it'll hurt. I doubt much will happen, but you know, keeping our uh, keeping our minds clear. Yeah, it did absolutely. It put a dent in it. It put a dent in it, but it uh, didn't really do that much. This thing has very little cutting capacity. Uh, I think that proves it. So I am very unimpressed with it as a cutter. Um, it did reasonably well, though, the shovel head against... Um, against, um, you know, something to be crushed, right? Like, uh, against uh, ice, you know, like it has some crushing capacity. I'm going to try to finish this bottle off, you know, you know, get a better shot at this. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That definitely worked. That definitely worked. Yep, this thing is a fantastic, a fantastic as a crushing weapon. Um. Oh yeah, very much so. Not doesn't cut too well, uh, but definitely um, just raw impact. And it's all concentrated. Yeah, it's not sharp, but it is on a very very narrow area. So um, a lot of a lot of energy can be uh, directed into a very small area here. Um, yeah, we got a uh, 
just carnage here. This would really mess up somebody for, like, say, someone's skull. Oh, yeah, definitely. Heavier plastic and ice again. So we'll see how badly this does. One final test here. We'll see what happens. And, uh, yeah, should be interesting. All right, so that went very well. Um, the handle, it went clean through. And uh, you got the, uh, the groove cut in here. So uh, yeah, very, uh, very powerful. Do like this a lot. Really, really was, uh, really was a lot more effective than I thought it would be. So yeah, um, actually the harder the target, the more solid it, so it seems to be that uh, the more solid the target is, as far as um, uh, the blade goes, the more solid the target, the better off it is. Um, yeah, no edge, so um, it would just get pushed out of the way, so something like just a regular water bottle just gets pushed out of the way without any real, um, you know, uh, without any real damage being done. But if it's solid, like it meets resistance, like a bone or something like that, you know, hit somebody in the skull with it, hit someone in the, you know, the collarbone, hit them in the arm with it. You were talking shattered bones with this. So yeah, this thing actually would be highly effective. I mean, it was highly effective. World War One. these things were very, some, well, not this kind, but, you know, things like this would be very commonly used as, uh, you know, in uh, the close confines of a trench. So um, yeah, very much so. And then the ice pick um, did a fantastic job. Just, uh, uh, right here uh, did a fantastic job. It's vaguely Beck to Corbin like and uh, Yeah, very impressed with all of it um, So that's pretty much it <clears throat> yeah, For today uh, just a real quick video um, You know uh, just tested this see what it could do and um, yeah very impressed with it um, So anyway, please hit the like and subscribe button more videos for me will be coming out whenever I get around to it and have a good day or don't have a good day. You're adults. You can have any kind of day you want. See you later. Yeah, got an audience. They like watching what I'm doing. Weird cats, but, you know, they're fun to have around.